Yaponingana. We welcome all to the celebration of Mass here within our Kingston Channel Catholic Parish. We acknowledge and pay respect to the original and ongoing custodians of the land. We acknowledge the continuing connection to land, seas, air and waterways and commit ourselves to the ongoing journey of reconciliation. We welcome elders past and present. Please join us in our entrance hymn. The Son and the Holy Spirit. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We'll have a part time mess. No. <laughs> At least mine's working for the moment, so I'm not quite sure what's going on. We apologise if uh, we have a little bit of trouble this morning. We tried to set up our microphones earlier and uh, we had a bit of trouble with them and thought we had it fixed. So, um, <laughs> welcome anyway. Um, today as we gather, we remember and uh, pray with Hazel as we remember Mike in our Mass and uh, pray for the eternal rep repose of his soul. Um, I mentioned something about his funeral in my homily today, but it was a great celebration and uh, I'm sure he would have been mightily pleased, except extremely embarrassed by so many people turning up. I had thought as I got up this morning that uh, I might wear shorts today, um, but then the um, Alexa told me that the temperature was going to be between zero and 10 and um, decided I wasn't going to try. <laughs> Each time we gather, we gather conscious that we're a community and as a community we have a whole range of different experiences and different stories to tell. The stories that are the simple stories of our happy moments of life and we also have the struggles and the challenges that face us. And so part of our story is to just make that gift of God's love real in how we live and how we behave or react to each other. So as we begin, I invite you to take just a moment to find a prayer partner and to ask that person to be your partner during our Mass today. So 
Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. From the prophet Ezekiel, the word of the Lord was addressed to me as follows. Son of man, I have appointed you a sentry to the house of Israel. When you hear a word from my mouth, warn them in my name. If I say to a wicked man, wicked wretch, you are to die. You are not, you, and you do not speak to warn the, the wicked man to renounce his ways. Then he shall die for his sin but I will hold you responsible for his death. If, however, you do want a wicked man to renounce his ways and repent, and he does not repent, then he shall die for his sin. But your, you yourself will have saved your life. The word of the Lord. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice. Harden not your hearts. Oh, today you will listen to his voice. Harden not your hearts. Come, bring out our joy to the Lord. Hail the rock who saves us. Let us come before him giving thanks. With songs let us hail the Lord. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice. Harden not your hearts. Come in, let us bow and bend low. Let us kneel before the God who made us, for he is our God and we are the people who belong to his pasture, the flock that is led by his hand. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice, harden not your hearts. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice, harden not your hearts as at Meribah, as on that day at Massa in the desert, when your fathers put me to the test, when they tried me, though they saw my work. 
Oh, that today you would hear him to his voice, harden not your hearts. A letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Avoid getting into debt. Accept the debt of mutual love. If you love your fellow man, you have carried out your obligations, all his commandments. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not kill. You shall not steal. You shall not covet, and so on, are summed up in the single command. You must love your neighbour as yourself. Love is the one thing that cannot hurt your neighbour. That is why it is the answer to every one of the commandments. The word of the Lord. Please do. God was in Christ. Do not reconcile the world to himself. And the good news of reconciliation he has entrusted to us. The Lord be with you. From the Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, If your brother does something wrong, go and have it out with him alone between your two selves. If he listens to you, you have won back your brother. If he does not listen, take one or two others along with you the evidence of two or three is required to sustain any charge. But if he refuses to listen to these, report it to the community. And if he refuses to listen to the community, treat him like a pagan or a tax collector. I tell you solemnly, whatever you bind on earth shall be considered bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be considered loosed in heaven. I tell you solemnly once again, if two of you on earth agree to ask anything at all, it will be granted to you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three meet in my name, I shall be there with them. The Gospel of the Lord. Sometimes by necessity, I need to start writing a, um, a message before I've actually preached uh, the previous message, and that happened in this last week. I started writing this uh, over 10 days ago because I knew that this particular week was going to be busy. Uh, hey, I flew to Melbourne on Monday to attend the Jubilarians uh, anniversary mass and dinner uh, for the priests of Corpus Christi College, my alma mater. And then on Tuesday, we celebrated the funeral of Mike Picconi. And then uh, on Wednesday, I had meetings all morning and uh, a meeting in the afternoon and then a meeting at night. And Thursday, I had mass in the morning uh, as well as uh, hunting field and then two meetings in the afternoon as well as a, an appointment. And on Friday, I actually had chance to sit down and do some more work on my homily. But as it so happens, uh, I actually overplan, and so I always feel as if I am rushed. But during the week, I had some times when I was able to sit down and to simply reflect on what was going on around me. And one of those happened after um, the dinner, the mass and dinner on Monday in Melbourne. I was able to join with some of the priests who celebrated 60 and 50 years of ordination. Sadly, there was only one from the 25-year group, 
but there were three of my companions, people that I spent seven years in the seminary with, and uh, we were able to sit at the one table and share some of the stories about our journey of priesthood and what's happened over the last couple of years. Um, COVID and last year, uh, we missed gathering, but we'd been able to gather most years previously. And then on Tuesday, we had a wonderful experience of people sharing the story of Mike Piconi's life. He was very busy, Hazel. And that's what happens when we hear the story of people's lives being shared with us. And that was a great celebration as well. And on Wednesday, I had time um, be between one meeting and the next to sit and just think about what had happened in these days. And I stopped and thought about the priests who celebrated their jubilees, my classmates as we shared our story, the story of Mike and his life, and I began to see very clearly what I've been talking about in this message series, the question, where is God? And I came to realise once more that God isn't always in the big events. Sometimes the power and the presence of God is in the ordinary things of life and the ordinary experiences of our day. And having that opportunity to stop and to think about what that actually means is a great blessing and it's something perhaps we don't all do very often. We might do it sometimes. But it's good to stop and think about what is actually happening in our lives at this moment. So over these few weeks, we've listened to the story of the prophet Elijah. He found God not in the earthquake or the fire or the great wind, but in a gentle breeze as he stopped at the face of the cave and was able to experience God in that moment. We heard it in the story of the Canaanite woman who came to Jesus and pleaded to have her daughter healed. And after Jesus had rejected her, she was able to challenge him to think about what his ministry was about. Was it just for the people of Israel, which is what Jesus had said? I've come not for the Gentiles, but for the lost sheep of Israel. And she had said, but the dogs under the table get the scraps. And Jesus looked at her and said, your faith has saved her. Your daughter is healed. Sometimes it's in the challenges, but other times it's in the simple. And then we had the two weeks where we heard the story of Peter. The first week, Peter was able to say, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Able to recognize in Jesus that this was something very special and he was the one who was to come. But as soon as Jesus spoke about the challenge of the cross of the fact that he was to suffer and to die and to rise again, Peter remonstrated and said, that can't happen to you, Lord. And like so many of us, when something is working, we can see the presence of God. But when something challenges us, we wonder where God is. And Peter was told, get behind me, Satan, for what the way you think is not God's way, but man's. And yet, in the previous passage, Jesus had said to him, Blessed are you, Peter, because the way you think is not man's way, but God's. So we have this dilemma going between the capacity to experience God really and the challenges we have to what is happening in our lives. We know that there are lots of things that make that really different. So one of the things that happens in our re readings this weekend is that we have, again, the story of one of the great prophets. Ezekiel is there as a prophet of the message of God's love. And yet Ezekiel is being told that what he is called to do is something quite profound. He's told he's going to be appointed as a sentry to the house of Israel. And he's told, when you hear a word from my mouth, warn them in my name. So he's being told, you're going to have a real challenge about making my message known. And then he is reminded that this is going to be really challenging. Because he is then told, if I say to a wicked man, wicked wretch, you are to die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked man to renounce his ways, then he shall die for his sin. But I will hold you responsible. So suddenly the prophet is not just telling the people that they must change their lives, 
But he's being given an imperative. He is told that he must speak into the midst of what's going on. And he must challenge people to think about and to change their lives. And if he doesn't, he will suffer as well. And so we know that that was one of the challenges that all of the prophets faced. The message that they were to proclaim was going to be a message that was uncomfortable to the people. And most of us, and I put myself in this spot really closely because I find it difficult to challenge people when something is wrong. And yet Jesus is telling us, you must do it. You must speak in to the issues and challenges that are there. If you don't, you have failed. But then Ezekiel is told that if he does speak to the, the word, and even if the person doesn't listen, but if he speaks the word, then his life will be saved. So the prophet is being told, we are being told, that there are things that we might need to speak into, to speak about, that are in fact challenging. And that comes through again in our gospel reading today, where Jesus tells us that where there is a problem in the community, you must speak first of all to the person where the problem exists. And if the person doesn't listen to you, then he tells us something, and this is really important, he tells us that we must become part of a community. He said we're two or three uh, gather, then we need to be together to, to deal with an issue. It's not just me against somebody, but it must be the community walking with and working towards helping somebody make a correction to their life. That doesn't mean ganging up on them, because always, as Paul tells us in our second reading, what we are to do is to be under the command of love. And Paul is quite emphatic when he says, you know, avoid getting into debt except the debt of love. And then he goes on to finish by saying, all of the commandments are summed up in the single command. You must love your neighbour as yourself. Now we hear that quite often, that commandment was to love God and love your neighbour as yourself. But there's a dimension that we don't always add to those words. And that's the final few, few words that tells us, as I have loved you. So if we are to love God and love our neighbour, then we must do it with the way in which Jesus loved us. And that was to freely and completely give himself to us so that we might be an expression by the way we live of how God loves us. I frequently use in funeral liturgies, in my homily, a line from the musical Les Miserables, a line that says, to love another person is to see the face of God. At the time, I'm trying to say to people that in the midst of their sadness, in the midst of their loss, the fact that they're there supporting the family is in fact an expression of God's love. The fact that they are witnessing to love by their support and their prayer may not be the best answer to the question where is God at that moment because that's obviously a moment when many people are wondering how does God work in a time of sadness and loss but if one person stops to think that maybe when we live and really love someone then we are God present in the midst of the world then maybe something has changed and something has shifted in the heart of a person and that's obviously what Jesus is calling us to talk about. He's calling us to challenge people to have a change of heart. That word we call metanoia, a turning away from where we were and facing in a new direction. We need constantly to be reminded of that. And that's where Paul tells us that the command to love God and to love your neighbour is the first and the most important. It's what Jesus said in the Gospel as well. But at the end of today's Gospel reading... There's another passage which I think is significant. It tells us that where two or three gather in my name, anything you ask at all, it will be granted to you by my Father in heaven. Mel Garvin, who founded the movement... Um, it just slipped my mind as I opened my mouth. 
Mel Garvin would speak about uh, evangelization and he would say where two or three people, where three people gather, they can change a hundred. So we could change close to a thousand people if each one of us went out believing that what we could do, we could make a difference. If two or three gather in my name and ask anything, then my Father in heaven will grant it to you. So what can we do today to make a difference? What can we do today to make God's love real for others? The gospel is about taking our prayer and making it real. If people are going to find an answer to the question, where is God? They're going to find it in the example and the witness of the Christian community that shares what God's love really means to them. They're not going to find it necessarily in a book. They're not going to find it in a video. They're going to find it in our words and our examples, which will then lead them to further understanding. But the first step is going to happen because you and I dare to live generously and graciously towards others as God lives towards us. Together let us make our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. Even the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Loving God, creator of the universe, you know every creature and its needs. With great trust, let us now offer our petitions in the name of all the world. For our world and all of creation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For young people called by Pope Francis to make mature lifestyle choices. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the needy of our community. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish called to be a place of welcome, understanding and forgiveness. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who are sick and suffering. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Jean Shanahan, Mike Picconi, Marie Triffitt, Joyce Fletcher, Father Steve Bohan, recently deceased, and all whose anniversaries we remember. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the special needs of our community. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of our prayer partner. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We join together as we pray the Synod prayer. We stand, stand before, before you, you, Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as we gather, we gather together, together in your name. With, with you, you alone, alone to guide, guide us, make, make yourself at home in our hearts. Together Teach us the way we must go and how, and how we, are we are to pursue it. We are weak and sinful. Do not let us promote disorder. Do not let ignorance lead us down the wrong path nor partiality influence our actions. Let us find in you our unity so that we may journey together to eternal life and not stray from the way of truth and what is right. All this we ask of you who are at work in every place and time in the communion of the Father and the Son forever and ever. Amen. Me your life forever. Will you carry my cross every day? Will you walk in the light of my presence? Will you call all the truth of my Will you love me as I have loved you? Will you live with me the darkness as I die? For the moon and the stars will be gone like the night and the sun will be shining on you. of gold in the furnace in the love strong enough to endure does the faith carry on through the shadows thanks Michael Thank you, Peter. As I have loved you, must do you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have saved the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, the work of human hands, that will become for us the bread of life. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good, the good of all his holy church. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering, we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may faithfully you be, may be faithfully united in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience 
we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of Faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Julian our Bishop, and all those who are called to your service. Remember also our brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with blessed, the Blessed Apostles, St. Aloysius, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours 
forever and So at the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power of the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer those nearest a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of all the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant that your faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and this heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. As mentioned, I think I mentioned last week about the um, fundraiser for leukaemia, one of the uh, young lasses at um, St Aloysius College has um, a leukaemia and has had been gone back, she, she was in remission and is now uh, struggling again with, uh, with the challenge of being a, a healthy little lass. So there's a S uh, St Aloysius Catholic College Cancer Crushers fundraiser event that's taking place um, and in the newsletter today there is in my ramblings a link for um, two of us, um, Polly Marriott who's the youth, uh, the pastoral associate between school and the parish. Um, Polly has a, a website, or, uh, has a link that you can link to, and I'm going to shave my head and my beard. As one of my brothers said, you won't be able to tell the difference. But anyway, that's what's <laughs> happening. Um, so that's coming up on the 29th of um, September. Um, Polly is having a, a, a chunk cut from her hair. Well, not a chunk, but she's, her hair is going to be shorter unless the team raises the goal of $5,000 and then she's going for the big shave. So if anyone wants to see what Polly Marriott looks like without hair, would you like to contribute to the uh, team effort to raise $5,000? I'm not being nasty. She actually said that we could advertise it. So... Um, so the links are there, and if you'd like to join in the fundraising, then please feel free to do so. On Wednesday, uh, Deacon Mick and I, and as well as clergy from around the diocese, will be at a pastoral conference, so there will be no mass or liturgy on Wednesday at Christ the Priest. Otherwise, the news and notices are there. It's not too late if anyone wants to go to the evangelism conference at Corpus Christi Bell Reeve next Saturday details are in the newsletter if you'd still like to make a booking for that. Have a great day, have a great week and please stay safe. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass has ended. Go now in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Oh.